it. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of anybody's time. Um, but thank you all for joining us for this Partners for Democracy Day session being hosted by Counterpart International, um, titled Bridging uh, Democratic Dissatisfaction um, Youth Engagement. Um, this is a conversation that I personally have really been looking forward to and I'm really excited to have with our um, wonderful panel members who have all graciously uh, volunteered an hour of their time to be here with us today. Um, so with that, we can just go ahead and, and get into our introduction. Um, so um, my name is Bryn Nori. Um, I'm a program assistant in our governance department at Counterpart International, um, and I will be the moderator of today's events. Um, and then I will introduce our panel members shortly. Um, so as background for this panel, um, numerous studies have shown that young people today are more dissatisfied with democracy globally than any other generation when they were at the same stage in life. Much of this can be contributed to feelings of exclusion from government, economic hardships they have continued to face throughout their lives, um, and a general lack of trust in their governments and government institutions. Um, despite these feelings, however, young people are incredibly engaged politically and tend to use what many call non-traditional platforms um, such as social media to organize, although for many young people, those platforms are ones that we grew up with, so they're not so non-traditional to us. Um, young people are eager to engage politically and advocate for the change that they'd like to see in their communities. Through this conversation, we will be exploring the seeming contradiction between how young people feel about democratic engagement and their demonstrated willingness to um, participate in that same engagement. Um, with all of that being said, it is my honor to do, introduce our panel members today. With us, we have Ahram Waskanyan uh, from the United Nations Association. Um, he's also a counterpart international partner. Um, Aram is based in Yerevan, Armenia, and is the Vice President of the United Nations Association of Armenia, a nonprofit organization with an 18-year legacy of civil society work. Um, throughout his tenure at UNA Armenia, he has dedicated over 15 years to spearheading projects aimed at advancing youth empowerment, human rights, and civil activism in his country. Currently, Aram le is leading the project Converging Youth Power for Good Governance in Armenia, which is supported by Counterpart International and USAID. The project advances, advocates for youth engagement mechanisms and corresponding legislative changes in Armenia. Arham holds a PhD in political science and his scholarly contributions extend to 13 academic publications covering a spectrum of topics, including political communication, social media influence, and the evolving nature of communicative societies. He has also served as a lecturer and trainer on various subjects, both in Armenia and other post-Soviet countries. In addition to his academic pursuits, Aram has a diverse professional background. He has worked as a journalist, independent reporter, and has held positions within diplomatic missions representing Armenia abroad. Aram, did I miss anything? Oh, no, thank you very much for, 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 for that introduction. Thanks a lot. That's a, a privilege and honor for me to be part of this panel discussion. Thank you very much for inviting us. And I hope that the insight that we're going to share will be helpful and will be meaningful in many terms. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, with us, we also have um, Peter Kafkowaisa from Students for Global Democracy Uganda. Um, Peter is a human rights and democracy activist. Formerly, he was a child protection worker, but currently he is the head of programs at Student for Global Democracy Uganda. He holds a Bachelor of Democracy and Development Studies from Uganda's Marti University, a Master's of Philosophy and Peace Studies from Trinity College, and is currently a PhD candidate in Governance and Peace at Uganda's Marti's University. Peter holds a certificate in peacebuilding from the Croc Peace School from the University of Notre Dame. As a peace practitioner, Peter has vast experience in human rights and democracy promotion and protection, peace building, and deepening local democracy among young people and principally the student community. 
As head of programs for Students for Global Democracy Uganda, Peter has been at the forefront of reaching out to student human rights defenders in underserved communities with physical and cybersecurity trainings, strengthening students' participation in meaningful democratic processes, popularizing the Rome Statute of the ICC among student communities. One of his greatest achievements at SGD Uganda has been his undeniable contribution to the organization's acquisition of the UN Special Consultative Status in 2023. He also reps the, represents the organization at other international foras like the United Nations events. Peter, did I miss anything? Absolutely fine. Thank you very much for that uh, brief introduction. I'm glad to be Great. part of this panel. Great. Thank you so much. And we also have with us today Pamba Ojera from the Youth Cafe. Um, Pamba is a passionate advocate for youth engagement and democracy. She's a recent graduate with honors in digital communication and environmental policy. Pamba leverages her background to champion youth participation and shaping a more just and sustainable future. Currently, Pamba serves as the communications and digital outreach officer at the Youth Cafe, a leading organization fostering youth civic participation across Africa. Her role aligns well with her dedication to empowering young people, particularly women, to be active in their communities. At the Youth Cafe, Pamba actively promotes the organization's core initiatives, such as the advocacy for youth rights and promoting youth political participation. She utilizes her communication skills to advocate for policies that ensure young people have a say in the decision-making process and have access to governance structures. Pamba's passion and strategic communication skills make her a driving force in empowering youth Africans to be informed, active, and influential members of their societies. Pamba, is there anything else you'd like to add? Nah, I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And then, um, Maman, are you on the call with us today? Okay, I think that Maman is, was unable to join us today, um, but for background, he is um, he's, uh, a member of the Support for Local Initiatives and Development Organization based in Niger, um, and is also a counterpart international partner, um, but it seems as though he was unable to join us today, unfortunately. Um, so with that, we can move into our questions so that I can stop talking and you all can hear from the panelists who you're here to hear from. Um, before we move into that, though, um, I would just ask that any questions that um, you have, please share them in the chat and we'll address them at the end of the panel. Um, and the session is also being recorded. Um, so if you'd like to share it after with people who are unable to join, we will be sharing the recording link um, to, to be shared. So, okay. Um, Pamba, my first question can go to you. Um, what ways does your peer group participate in democracy and how would you characterize feelings about democracy and democratic institutions amongst your peer group? Uh, just let me cl clarify, by my peer group, do you mean like the youth of A or uh, just people I, <laughs> I am with? <laughs> just to clarify. Um, yeah, no problem. Maybe like young people that you interact with through your work at the youth cafe. Ah, okay. I got it. I got it. Um, well, <clears throat> democracy so far is 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 messy as we have, as we have, as we have learned as we have come to learn. Uh everywhere you look um in the world, you can't really exactly see a political system that is um legitimately uh stable. So I can't say that, well, <laughs> uh, coming from an African country, I can't say that as the youth, we're very, very uh, disengaged in politics. Well, a huge number of us. I can't say that we are definitely trying to be to, to um, participate in, in various ways, but I can say that largely we are very, very much. And um, it's because of various components. Uh, but just like I was saying, if you if you look at everywhere in the world, you can't really get to see um a, a political system that is stable and and it kind of leaves you okay what exactly who exactly is um is uh, a role model if you're looking at the West they sort of seem 
to come up like with sort of like some sort of hypocrisy because you can't really they say one thing and they end up doing another thing so you can't really look at the west and every every corner of the globe seems to be seems to just be that the war is striking out the the um uh well essentially the war striking out there was a time we were, we were thinking we, we would probably be having like a world war three yes um Youth uh, countries were thinking of drafting the youth into war, but you know there was a collective. Well, we are really not doing that. <laughs> uh, that's because you know the world is becoming more. The world is being defined more by power, and it seems like we are. It seems like uh, as a youth, it seems like you are in the middle of watching two bulls fight, and you are the grass. You seem to be. You're sort of like a pawn in in this entire thing. You can't really uh, engage because you're not them. You, you're not particularly with them, and and. Uh, it all just seems like you, you you can't really connect with what's going on. Uh, so I can't say that, yes, we are very, very disengaged. Um, does that answer the question? <laughs> yes, definitely. And what do you think is driving that um, disengagement amongst, uh, amongst youth? Okay, uh, there's one thing, uh, we, we, last week we had, we, we were part of the People's Dialogue Festival, which is uh, sort of like what the global, what the, the third summit uh, of democracy is, but in, in a national context. And what we were doing is uh, we uh, sort of did an, anal an, an analysis of the um, youth engagement of, um, in the 2022 Kenyan election. And uh, what we actually did discover is that, <clears throat> Well, for sure, there was a decline in, in youth participation in the elections uh, of the 2022, as according to um, the 2027, uh, the 2017, <laughs> my apologies. And, and uh, well, we did discover that one of the reasons why people were not engaged is number one is they couldn't acquire ID to, to, to be a part, to, to be, to register in, to, well, you're part of, you're part of the political institution in Kenya, you need to, to, have a national ID and, and have a voter's ID. And that can be very difficult if you don't have a national ID. Um, so yes, there were there were there was sort of like a disenfranchisement to to some sort of people, to a group of people who couldn't uh they say minority, but anyway, who couldn't actually access um uh ID cards. Uh, of course there was a, a lack of interest in the political leaders because we don't really trust what they say. Um, in Africa, there has been there has been uh, the common notion of of, of um, leaders telling you one thing, of course, and 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 uh, as soon as the, the the election campaign is over, <laughs> things things go back in place. And well, to be fair, the leaders in in Africa they don't really think about um, the the long term sustainability or the growth of Africa because. They are thinking of 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 extending their power. They can they get they get into power and 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 um they they change laws uh to to accommodate them to extend that 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 time um in power and and so there 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 is really a lack of trust to 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 what that they say. Um, so you can get in areas in 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 yes some areas in Africa are very stable, but you you get in areas where they are using force to ensure that people. Are, are 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 voting for a particular leader and such and such. Um, we have also come to learn that uh, uh, yes, uh, it, the divide is 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 that we feel we feel like um when you're in a political space, there's a lot of jargon. So so to, the youth can can't really um can't really relate to what um the people in the political space are saying. I remember in in one of the booths. Um, that we have a holding up and and you you'll get a youth coming up to the table and they'll ask you is this really like a part of us because they really just feel like I guess maybe the messages just weren't really resonating with who they were so we kind of got a lot of uh, I really just don't feel like yes you're saying you're you you're here working for the youth but I really just don't feel like you are you feel like you are part of the elite so so that is something that we got on a constant um, of course, there is, <laughs> there is corruption at a high level. Kenya did uh, score a 31 at the Transparency International uh, 2020, 2023 Corruption Perception Index. And uh, this, of course, is a huge factor. Um, we seem to be disappointed in, in, in um, 
well, I guess it still goes back to lack of trust. Um, if you really cannot uh, assist, ascertain um, the integrity and uh, the accountability of your political leader, are you really going to just stick to to what they're going to say and actually just talk to them or at least participate in what they're doing? No, you're not. Um, so yes, corruption is. We on a day to day, we get to hear how much money has been has been <laughs> laundered in the government, and you know you get to like, oh well, that's that's what's going on here. It's 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 no more. Okay. They say no. It's it's what we are accustomed to now, and of course, there's financial barriers. Um, just being a part of a political campaign is expensive, so other youth can be very very difficult to choose. Just to say, like, I'm actually want to stand and and be a part of that. And sometimes those who actually do get to stand when they get to power, they forget um the reason why they got there. They I guess they get absorbed into the system and they just carry on on what. On what's going on so it's, it's a continuum cycle of what we continue to see every day and i can't say a little bit of um well uh, to be fair there's a lot of things to be to be worried about other than okay what exactly is my leader thinking um you know we have like high unemployment rates there, there are other uh social economical barriers um and, and poverty levels so it's really really hard to engage when you when, you, when you're struggling to, to get to um your day-to-day and yeah, of course, there's unmet, unmet expectations. What they say and what you get to hear is different. And one thing actually about Kenya that we've got to learn is um, we're very, very tribal. We're very, very um, divided in that manner. When you're voting for people, you're not, you're not um, voting because you think that this person is actually going to do something for you. No, you are voting because they are in the same tribe as you. And, and, <laughs> and this is... After the election is not very apparent, but when the election period comes comes closer, wow, there, there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh is it barriers or like um cracks in between in between um the citizenship. So I think I can say that's the reason why perhaps we are not as engaged in 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 um politics. Yeah, thank you so much for kind of shedding light on some of the day-to-day -day more practical reasons why young people might not be as engaged in democracy as, as we would like them to be. Um, Ahram and, and Peter, is there anything that you guys would like to add from, from your perspectives on this issue? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I would like to continue what has been said by Pamba, but uh, yes, I do agree that this engagement is a, is a global trend. And I do believe uh, you can see it in every country in the world and there are many, many factors that affect the whole disengagement issue among the young people because of the fact, for example, in my country, in Armenia, or in our region, in the South Caucasus region, one of the main problems in terms of disengagement can be the long lasting persisting threat of conflict of a war and it makes young people very frustrated and it makes young people very disengaged in many terms but of course we're also talking about the whole governing system so and our main projects at the una armenia are designed to address the uh, governance issue in terms of, for example, of the lo local governments and also advocacy for all kind of legislative changes, which are we conducting doing in terms of our CYPG project, which is uh, supported by the uh, counterpart international and USA aid, just to come and close that gap, giving opportunities to young people to overcome the disengagement through the uh, establishing of youth councils that will be attached to the aldermen councils in the communities uh, of Armenia, and they will have the opportunity of taking part in the whole decision-making process. I do believe that we all have, I mean, in every country in the world, more or less, I mean, in global terms, more or less the same problems. Yes. But at the same time, there are also solutions and there are also possibilities of engaging young people into civic life, into political processes, into in general decision-making processes, making them the exact agents of change for their future. That's a hard job, 
it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of efforts but it's also a very rewarding work especially for civil society representatives for example we have uh, our civic action groups in different communities of Armenia and those civic action groups are mostly, I mean, the capacities of those civic action groups are built by our organization with the further impact on their future involvement in their community lives, being able to raise questions, to voice their, uh, for example, this dissatisfaction and find solutions, find a uh, uh find a possibility of building a dialogue with local authorities and that dialogue we do believe is the key for uh for, for, for overcoming the whole disengagement process which i i will state once more is a kind of a global trend and a global issue i would like to add just this thank you yeah, that was great. Um, it was really great to hear what your organization is doing, and I would love to hear more about that in a little bit with our next question, but I want to give Peter the opportunity to add anything um, that he might want to add before we move on. You're muted. Sorry. We can't... Hello? Can there you we go. Me? Yes, we can. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with my 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 past colleagues, there is a big disconnect between uh, the policy makers and the politicians and the young people. But uh, at the same time, it, it's very interesting to interrogate, for example, in my country, Uganda, how the youth through uh, and also to an official platforms are organizing themselves. Our constituents are basically in the university, special institutions of learning, we are, we are building local democracy and doing human rights programs. And uh, it's interesting to understand how the people power movement that was formerly, uh, that was uh, formerly, that was started by someone in the ghetto has organized young people, even where we go in our, in our different fashion institutions. It, it's resonating to, to what young people's issues are, and they are able to, to transmit the pertinent issues that are affecting them. And uh, through our works and other civil society organizations, uh, when we visit them, we are able to see them discuss the pertinent issues that are affecting them. We are able to see them uh, engage in governance issues. So, that is a that is a part of my Japanese PhD research. But at the same time, I would like to to, to appreciate the platform ways in which the youth are trying out to reach out to to understand issues that affect them politically, economically, and socially. We have had uh, we have had in my instance we have had several several elections in different institutions of learning where even this movement that has fielded candidates, you, you see them in, in getting elected in the elected positions. And it's very interesting. They don't have much, they don't have the resources, the platform in which they use they use it for communication is not widely understood. So it would be interesting to interrogate that, but at the same time, I would like to agree that it's a big disconnect on the account between uh, old people and young people and governance issues, like my colleagues have said. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think all of you echoed, you know, very similar sentiments that I've noticed um, where I live of youth just not really feeling like there's too big of a space for them or too much of a table and really having to engage them, as Aram said, is going to take a lot of work. Um, so with that being said, and with the insights that you all just shared, um, I'll direct this question um, to Aram because you've already kind of answered it a little bit. So if there's anything you'd like to add, please do. Um, 
what more could be done to foster trust and engagement in democratic institutions amongst young people? And um, what is your organization doing to encourage this engagement and trust? Again, you've already begun to talk about it. So if there's anything you'd like to add, I'd love to hear more. Well, uh, I do believe that, and I believe in general that we all can do more. I mean, on at national level, at the global level, and we, I do believe, all have the uh, energy and resources to do more for the young people in general. But somehow to foster more trust and engagement in democratic institutions. To my opinion, it's really important to invest more in education and also support young people with all kinds of institutionalized mechanisms of being involved in decision-making processes. Because this is the exact part when young people feel themselves as agents of change. They take part in all kinds of important decisions for their local communities, for their cities, and in general, for their country. So nurturing a responsible citizenship is a must. And I do believe that non-formal education, which is mostly provided by uh, civil society in all of the countries, is a really important tool to reach that trust and engagement. Because of the fact that if you teach young people uh, the main principles of accountability, of transparency, of of, and you give them the feeling that they have the opportunities to change something in their local communities and at the same time in their country, it starts working in a good manner. So that is why all of our projects are addressed to the right-based education for young people. And we believe that that right-based education is key to meaningful engagement. What do we understand by saying meaningful engagement? It is to conceptualize and institutionalize all kinds of mechanisms that can support young people to be engaged in the whole decision making process. It also takes a lot of time because we're talking mostly about all kinds of legislative barriers in different countries, advocating for, for changing in general the legislative landscape. And also it doesn't mean that you are just working with the young people. It means that you are also working with politicians, with local authorities, <laughs> with all kinds of governments. And uh, at the same time, trying also not only persuade them, but also educate them in terms of all those issues, reminding them that they are duty bearers and you are the right holder and you can reach, I mean, you can overcome that gap in that way. So mainly we are working in the civil society and with young people, young people in Armenia uh, for more than 18 years. And all of our projects are... Uh, based on the education so and the capacity building of all those young people. And for example, we have a lot of good examples in terms of, of uh, that process because nowadays, for example, our ex-beneficiaries, they, they are representatives of local authorities, they are representatives, uh, government representatives at the national level. We have uh, uh, some beneficiaries that are working in different ministries, uh, in parliament, etc. So, and they do, and they are those people who are advocating and promoting for more youth activism and youth engagement. So I do believe that, that that's the whole process, right? Based education and capacity building. Thank you. Hey, yeah, that all sounds like some really interesting programming. And it's great to hear about um, the sustainability of your programming as well. Um, Peter, is there anything that, that you would like to add on this about what your organization is doing to, to keep young people engaged in democratic processes? Yeah, basically what we are doing is we promote uh, the, the room statutes, the different institutions of learning, and we are also, we have democracy and literacy programming in secondary schools. And uh, the response so far has been good. 
we have been able to set up uh, 30 clubs where it's and, uh, and more parliaments in the different uh, institutions of learning and the schools where these young people are using that as a forum to discuss pertinent issues of governance and democracy and human rights that affect them. And they have gone ahead from their own uh, small duty bearers in their communities and uh, wherever they are, they, they live. For example, I have a good example of the Child Protection Committee that has been formed by one of our beneficiaries in his community. And uh, it's responsible for, for guarding against rights abuse in the community. Child exploitation around the sugarcane plantation, which is, uh, which I feel is, is, is quite uh, uh, responsive, and I feel is, a, is as a result of our works in the different institutions. I think uh, we need more capacity. We need to, to reach out to them through the different forums. Mm -hmm. We have had uh, several programs that target, that, uh, that, uh, that allow them to use ICT and uh, other media programs. So it's from that that we see that the progress of the terms of the, the, the young people getting engaged in the issues that affect them, and even elective projects at, at their own communities, not only in the institution. Some of them have come up and they have stood for, for like local council elections, and uh, some of them have gone through. So, Precisely that is what we are doing in the institution and, uh, and the schools. Great, thank you. And um, Pamba, the interventions that your organization is doing, how would you say that young people respond to them? Do they really enjoy them? Do they Are they more excited about um, getting involved in democracy um, as a result of your programming? Um, I, I can actually say that young people in, okay, so far in Kenya, uh, but to an extent in Africa, because we do have, we do have a, a footprint in, 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 in the West, East and the South of, of Africa, I can see that there is um, um, uh, a, a great response to, to, um, to, should I say the type of steps that we are working to 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 ensure that <laughs> the youth participate in the in in in, in political institutions? Well, just like um my colleagues have been saying, we definitely also uh try to ensure that we we give them as much as much skills and, and, and build them, give them as much uh confidence, and let them be like self reliant in 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 the in their in their in the manner of, of ideologies or whatever it is that they're trying to, to push out because yes we are a youth led organization but we're also we are we are do we have uh we have individuals and other youth led institutions under us so uh we try <clears throat> yes of course it's very very important to, to to give them as much knowledge and education around that. I, I think I don't know if it's Socrates or Plato that said democracy is as effective as the education system uh, around it. Uh, yeah, and and to be fair, while we we were hosting the People's Dialogue Festival, the youth would would definitely come come to our table, and they would be like, "I really do love what you guys are doing." We have um, we 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 not only uh uh, like hold workshops, publish uh articles or events, give them um as much tools and resources that they feel like that they will need to to move forward. So yeah, we we definitely have had uh, a great response in around that. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's so exciting. Um, I see that Maman was able to join us. Um, can you hear us, Maman? Is your technology working? Oh, we can't hear you if you're speaking. Okay, we will come back to Mama, and if you um, are able to figure out whatever might be going on with Zoom, which can be such a funky platform to use, um, please let me know and I will come back to you. Um, so throughout um, our conversation thus far, um, it's been reiterated by all members of our panel um, that this can be a really hard space to work in. It takes a long time to see results and to see 
um, things change. Um, so maybe we can start with Peter and then move through the panel. Um, what do you do to take care of yourself and your mental health while working in this space and in the democracy world? <laughs> it's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, I would be honest, we have not had much, but um, we have had a partner who had, uh, had offered to train us. As, uh, it's offered psychosocial support. Uh, and has been able to train my team, my staff, and uh, a couple of people in all of the field, especially in the field. And uh, that's, and I have had a week or event on how they, they, they do their work, and we are grateful to that partner. But I'll be honest, uh, our, there's not much that we have not ventured much into the issue of main hotels while working in the democratic space. We realize, for example, when we have an election here, we are sometimes involved in human rights issues and there are extremes sometimes that uh, we wouldn't imagine. But uh, we pledge to build a partnership with a future partner who can help in that line. It's a pity we have not done it. There's not much apart from the training that we have had in regards to security and human rights. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I think that's you know something important to to keep in mind. Um Aram, is there anything that you'd like to share on this about how you take care of yourself and your mental health? Well, yeah, working in the democracy space can indeed be very challenging. <laughs> The, sometimes you are dealing with different groups, with, with different people, with, and sometimes uh, uh, your beneficiaries are from all kinds of marginalized groups, and you have to do a lot of job and also dedicate yourself to the main mission and to the purpose of of what are you doing but i do believe that self awareness and somehow mindfulness are are the best remedies for any kind of issues uh, when you have and i do believe that work and uh, life balance should be always a priority for a person who is working for the uh, civil society uh, at least to me, I always find strength and resilience in mainly in the progress and in the success achieved through for many efforts. So it, it, it's always a kind of a source of inspiration for me. Uh, but at the same time, I do believe uh, for me, it's really important also for physical exercising, going to gym, weightlifting, and everything that helps me always to be, to keep my mental health in a good shape. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I The gym is a great place to get out from frustration. True. <laughs> I'll, try yeah, and... I'll try it as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and Pamba, do you have anything that, that you would like to add on this topic? Actually, I, I, my sentiment sort of mirror arms. I, I, I definitely need to work out or at least do some yoga to, to sort of uh, uh, be able to like self regulate and ensure that my mental health is okay. But, but maybe let me just add community because um, the youth cafe we are really truly just consisting of youth and uh, of youth who have uh who share the same ideology and we understand what we're doing what we're here and yes it can be very very difficult but um at the end of the day when you come back and, and, and you sort of like have this 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 this, this, this um, sense of support system and and they sort of like pat you in the back and like we get it we understand this, this is the part that we've chosen but you're tired just have a sit <laughs> we take a <laughs> cup of tea um yeah so having community is, 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 is definitely important having people who you have the same um the same values or or you're on the same journey is absolutely important because when when you're down um when you don't have energy the next person does and they they're able to like carry you along as you as you're moving so community 
important. Yeah, definitely. Community is, is so important when working on, on these types of issues. Um, in general, when you all are, um, you know, engaging with the youth that, that your organizations and your programs target, what do they say about this issue? How do they feel their mental health does when working these issues? And what do they do to sort of make sure that they're taking care of themselves so that when they're in the position to begin advocating, they're able to do that um, as effectively as they'd like? Whoever wants to take it can. <laughs> well, I do believe the community feeling is really very important and when you share it with them and you uh, somehow try to cultivate that feeling. And mostly, for example, during different workshops or trading sessions or, for, for example, a gathering, mostly young people uh, start to sharing their feelings, saying like, like when, when they come to kind of meeting, when they see people alike, when they feel that there are also, for example, peers of their age who have the same problems, who share the same values, and who also, uh, I mean, live, I mean, in, in the same environment, and at the same, the same time, they care, I mean, uh, for that environment, uh, more or less uh, in a very close way to each other. So it, it helps them to overcome. So it is always the community feeling and of course the feeling that you are giving to those young people saying that you are the agents of change. You are able, you are believing in themselves and they believe, believe in yourself. So, and I do believe we're talking about the mistrust in terms of all kind of government institutions. And I mean, it's a kind of a general trend but at the same time, we can also see that young people have faith in civil society. And when they lose that faith, for example, in terms of the government and, I mean, the governmental institutions, they safeguard that trust for the civil society. So, and I do believe that's, uh, that's uh, kind of a thing that we should, the representatives of civil society should be, uh, uh, um, I mean, I should consider <clears throat> with more attention and with more responsibility, of course. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Moment, I see that you're back on. Can we hear you now? Do you want to, is there anything we could like to add to this? Okay, it looks like he's still connecting to the audio. So perhaps that that is, he's not quite ready yet to, to, or his Zoom isn't ready yet for him to join us. Um, so then we can we can move on. Um, Humba, I'd love it if you could start off with, with this. Um, what would you and your organization like to see the international community do more to encourage young people to engage democratically? Okay. Uh... I, I will I will reference what we have worked on, uh, just just based on 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 the on the on the analysis that we did, uh, because I do feel like it it still it touches on 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 um what we are going on, uh, in Africa. Let me say that. <laughs> let me let me say that. So um, in terms of what we could do more, I feel like. Uh, we do have, we do tend to have a lot of uh, anti-governmental um, demonstrations and 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 coups and, and such and such. So in order to 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 um, ensure that the process is, is entirely is entirely smooth, uh, we need to institutions <clears throat> need to prioritize uh, transparency in their in their operations and decision making processes. Uh, I think we I think we are uh, the youth are having trouble. Um, well, yes, uh, trusting what they say. So if they, if if, if, that, if they could uh, be more uh, transparency in the operations, that would be very very um very very helpful. <laughs> Let me say that. Uh, um, I don't know if this would be well. It could be establishing independent um, oversight mechanisms to monitor the activities of institutions so that they can enhance credibility and ensure adherence in ethical standards and best practices. I know in Kenya, we do have um, ELOG, uh, it's an electoral observation group, which, which sort of like 
is parallel to what now the IBC. IBC is the main um it's the main uh electoral body in Kenya. So I guess uh it's like a it's like a it's like a it's like an independent oversight of what the IBC is. So from what they remove and what ELOG puts out, if they match, then it seems like the um the election was fair. Uh so it's it's some some sort of like reassurance per se. Um <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, another is is this uh, institution definitely um uh, demonstrates responsiveness to the needs and concerns of the public by addressing promptly. Well, I can say maybe in Kenya we did try because with the emergence of the People's Dialogue Festival, it, it, it's it's like we're bringing together everybody in the um the US uh, multi governmental stakeholders and putting them together and like having a talk. This is what's going on in the country. Um, uh, okay, how how best can we move forward? So I guess um maybe having that. Oh, what we're doing here is, is definitely like a step ahead. So I guess we are we? <laughs> moving in the right direction. Uh, and then uh, promoting ethical leadership within institutions of quality, integrity, honesty, and ethical standards. This is going to be an issue uh, in most countries in Africa, but I guess we, we shall wait to see the day. <laughs> shall wait to see the day when this, when this happens, when everything, the transition of power is very, very... Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I guess uh, that's what I think. Yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. Um, it's great to hear what you all are doing. Um, Peter and Aram, both of your organizations do interact with the international community quite a lot. What more would you like to see from the international community to support young people who want to be involved in um, democratic processes? Well, uh, precisely, that I would like to say uh, there is need for more civic education. If we could get civic support to these civil society organizations. I will use a clear example. Last week, there was a report that came out from the our parliament of Uganda from a young lady called Agatha Akele that exposed the rot that is in the parliament. The speaker, the deputy, and the others. And this was nowhere in the mainstream media. It was nowhere in the other media outlets. And these are young people. So it's very interesting to understand that even when we go out to the field and uh, probably here, some people probably uh, hear young people talking about issues that were uh, corrupted in Parliament. So if there were the possibility of enhancing the support, International community targeted towards civil society and young, especially that that deepening law for democracy and young people. If you have the report on the government's issues, human rights, and issues that affect young people. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great message that, that the international community needs to support more civic education um, for young people. Um, Aram, I see you unmuted, so I will let you. Yeah. yeah, I would like also to uh to continue Peter's uh, I mean main main, uh, main idea. So uh, I I do believe that uh, especially our international partners, I mean they should invest. They should think of developing completely new innovative mechanisms of youth engagement because of the fact that all kind of conventional methods, or all, all kind of traditional methods, they they have stopped working in terms of because we're living in an evolving communication environment we're not living in in the communication in one environment where um, there is that state centric approach in terms and nowadays having all kind of collaborative governments in different parts of the world uh civil society becomes more and more important unfortunately we're also witness nowadays a kind of a uh, trend that many national organizations they prefer to work exactly I mean directly with governments of those countries so I'm all especially talking about our regions the South Caucasus region more investing in the capacity building of the government of the government entities and rather than uh, having that investment in the, uh, um, the civil society but I do believe that civil society is the exact, I mean, long lasting and the most sustainable part of that investment because we are we, we want responsible and accountable citizens. 
And for that, we should work exactly with the civil society, which I do believe nowadays in the world does so many things. So, and uh, civil society has already become a pioneer in its sphere. And I do believe that uh, the collaboration between the civil societies at the national level and the international partners can, can boost a completely different issue. And also, I, I do believe that we should also have a kind of a absolutely new, new methodology of working with youth engagement issues. And this means that we should take into consideration very seriously all kind of digital uh, uh let us say possibilities that we have nowadays and of course we should also examine each group of because we're dealing with a lot of subgroups of young people it's sometimes very hard to identify people in general yeah but at the same time um we're dealing with very very different identities in one society and I do believe that we should have more flexible approaches and more innovative platforms to engage young people. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, Mohamed, I'm not sure if your audio is working yet, but if it's not, please feel free to add your thoughts into the chat. Um, I definitely want to make sure that, that we um, hear you and, and your thoughts on, on the discussion today. Um, so thank you all. That was really wonderful and really great to hear um, that, you know, education, more trust in um, institutions uh, in dialoguing with young people are all things that that you all think that the national community needs to to do more of. And and um, hopefully through this platform that that will be heard. Um, we will move into our last question for this panel before we kind of open it up to, to our audience members um, and hopefully end on a positive note. Um, so, and this can go to anyone. Um, what advice uh, do you have for young people who want to get involved in politics or democracy, um, but may be worried that they might not have the impact that they would like to have? Um, what would you want to tell them? Maybe, um, Pamba, you can go first. Uh, I would say that, just put it out. I guess it, 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 it's simple, just do it. Uh, one thing I've learned is that, that, that you might not know um, as you start out how things go, but as you, you know, the more you do it, the more you, 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 put, uh, you put structures and frameworks around uh, what you're doing. And it becomes easy, and and you you start to have a goal. So, uh, the the easiest answer in this start is just like let go of the fears and literally just do it. Put out your message. What what you're putting out is exactly what someone else is trying to hear because regional contexts are very different. So maybe what you're putting out is what someone else is going to to, to resonate with. And well, that's why we that's why we have target audience. Not everybody is going to be in your demographic, but you're definitely going to have a set of people who are, you know, who are going to, to, to listen to you and, and they want to hear what you want to put out. So just do it, put it out there. <laughs> That's, it's as simple as that. I love that. <laughs> um, Peter, Arham, either of you want to, want yep. to share your advice? Yeah, go ahead. But, but young people need to know, they need to invest in knowing uh, the situation analysis on the ground. You have the young people these days who will tell you the first 11, Manchester United, the second 11, Manchester United, and the substitutes of Manchester United. When you ask them about their leaders in the community, they don't know. Okay, for a young person right now, I would be investing in knowing what is the situation on the ground before I venture into politics. And that comes with knowing, getting civil educational discussion in the ground, getting to know the governance issues that affect the local person, getting to live with the community. So that energy, that positive energy, if it is invested in knowing what is on the ground, is a good launch pad to start your democratic role and to start venturing into politics. In most cases, some of them 
who get elected to these elective positions do not know there is a disconnect between them and their community. And that creates a lot of uh, gaps in the service delivery. So precisely with me, I would think that they would invest more energy in knowing their communities and leadership structures and what is the situation analysis of the government. Because there are lots of media uh, outlets, there's lots that you can learn even without going to formal or informal networks. So precisely that's what I would advise the young person to get to know how we live in the community, get to know why a road is not being worked on, get to know why uh, a road is not swept, get to know why there's garbage in front of you. And that is the start point of joining politics because that's how you mobilize civil society. That's how you mobilize your people. That's how you mobilize the most marginalized people. And that's how people start to respect you. We have good examples, for example, here in Uganda, where someone is coming from the ghetto and he has mobilized people with meager resources. And up to day now, he's the, the leader, he's part of the leader of opposition in Uganda. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Loving all the sports references we've got going on here too. Um, Aram, what would you like to add? Yes, and I, I would like to add, I, I would like to remind everybody that especially our young people that there is no alternative to democracy so i would advise them to embrace their roles as responsible citizens and the most important thing is that my advice is to all our young people just say yes to yourself just say yes to your future because I mean, I I I know that I'm not aiming to sound fancy at all, but saying yes, uh, you always do something new, and doing something new, you are making a difference, and that, that difference impacts, uh, influences not on, only your life but the lives of other pe people. So. I know that yes is a very tiny word, but this is the exact word that can uh, do big things and can create change. So that's my yeah. message for young people. Great, thank you. Let's see if Zoom is being friendly with Maman one more time. Um, is there anything that you would like to add um, either over the chat or um, unmute yourself, Maman? Okay. Well, I think that that is, um, oh, okay, great. So I think that that is um, a really great note to end on for any young people listening in right now, live with us, or who will be watching this later too. Just do it, um, get to know your community and say yes to your future. Um, I think that's all really wonderful advice um, to for any young people. Um, seeking, looking for advice on getting involved democratically. Um, I am conscious of the time, but perhaps there's one question from the audience that someone would like to ask our panel members before we, we end for today. Um, feel free to um, put it in the chat or um, unmute yourself. Okay, great. Well, no questions means that you guys did a fantastic job <laughs> of talking about, about our panel today. Um, oh, no, here we go. Um, how can we end, uh, TYC asks, um, how can we end age-based discrimination, eliminate age-based discrimination, and recognize and take youth perspectives more seriously? If anyone would like to, to jump in on that one. I do believe that's a very specific questions in terms of and in terms of various countries and the, the, the various backgrounds of uh, people. So, age based. What do you mean by saying age based discrimination? I'm just 
trying to understand uh, what is the whole scope of the question, age-based discrimination. So uh, we know that there are different age restrictions in terms of young people in various countries of the world. There are countries that consider that young people are those who are under 30. There are people who are, there are countries that are saying that young people are those who are under 35 and, and etc. Though, I mean, on the... Um, at the international scale, we're seeing that mostly we're uh, saying that, for example, half of the population of the world population is under 30 years old, and th that uh, is going to increase. So uh, there is also a need to venture in your friendly actions like social media, music, dance. And so I do believe age issues should be... Um, should be considered and uh, should be discussed in terms of very concrete exact environments, countries and communities to see whether there are uh, those issues, problems or other concerns in terms of this. So for, for me, it's really hard to reflect to, to it, to refer to it in a kind of a, uh, in a general manner. Yeah, thank you. Pum uh, Pumba, Peter, is there anything that you'd like to add on this question? Okay, then we have one more question and then we will we will let everybody go. Um, TYC also, uh, also says, um, access to funding is an issue um, the international community can be supportive with. Um, how can the international community support local and global CSOs through core accessible funding and capacity building with simplified administrative processes? I do believe, unfortunately, there are no simplified administrative uh, processes, especially when you are working in the civil society, when you are working with uh, civil society organizations and we, when you are working with international donors. So I do believe the whole mechanism and uh, they should be revised in general at the global on the global scale because I do believe that it's time to have a completely different methodology in terms of collaboration between the civil societies, uh, civil society NGOs and the international partners. And at the same time, there should be also a kind of a revision of the whole legacy that we have in terms of the cooperation or collaboration between the, um, the nonprofit organizations and the governments. So, but it's not a simplified administrative process, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, because we're dealing with absolutely different structures, organizations, different legislations. So, and unfortunately it can't be that simplified. Yeah, there definitely, there definitely is a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to getting funding um, for better or for worse. Um, well, I have about a million more questions and I think I could stay here all day, but um, everyone's very busy. So we will not be doing that, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to extend my deepest um, appreciation uh, for our panel members who um, took time out of their day to share their insights on this really important topic with us today. Um, and as well as thank all of the members of the audience who joined us to listen in on this conversation and engage in uh, these panel members on this topic of um, youth engagement and democratic dissatisfaction. Um, so with that, we will go ahead and end the panel um, and I'll stop the recording. Um, and thank you all so much for, for joining us today. Um, and panel members, if you could stay back for a minute um, just so we can um, connect briefly before, before we all head our separate ways. Um, thank you all so much. Hello.